Hey everybody, it's Rhea Gregg and I'm back with a part three of how to create a graphic novel cover. And surprise, surprise, Puffalump has decided to join me in the making of this video since he technically won't leave me alone. Um, <laughs> anyways, I am going to talk a little bit about how to do like character coloring, um, coloring in just sort of the backgrounds and stuff. And yeah, let's get started. Right, Puff? Yeah, he's just gonna sit here and make this video a little bit more entertaining. Right, buddy? Yeah. All right, well anyways, let's get started. I'm excited to get into it. So to start off with the coloring, I bucket filled my character in and I'm just going in and doing some of the more like final tuning touch-ups. Going in making sure that each of these sort of sections of Mup's character are fully colored in and making sure that there's no like gaps or anything. One of my favorite things about coloring in Mup is coloring in her green eyes because I feel like the minute I give her her eyes some color and give her that little touch of light, um, her character really sort of pops out and really comes to life. One of the things about this cover that I was considering doing was having Mup's scale, her necklace sort of flying through the air. And the reason why I wanted to do this was because I thought it would be a good way to frame the words for the, or the title for the cover. And I actually ended up getting rid of this in the end, but it was good to experiment at first. I really do enjoy coloring in the characters because for me this is where the fun starts to happen where I can just kind of relax and color very similar to coloring in like a coloring book. You just kind of go in and make everything look really good. So the next thing I decided to do was to start coloring in the background with some more finer detail and for the mountains it was fun. I got to start to paint in the snow in the glaciers and doing in some of the, you know, the drop shadows and the shadows in the canyons and gullies. So that was really fun. It's fun to draw mountains because they just have this very dramatic, like, landscape about them. And it's always really fun to draw snow because snow is so white and so clean. So it was really fun to do these glaciers and snow-capped mountains, even though um, they don't take up much space on the cover. It was important for me to get a lot of detail in here. So the next step would be to work my way forwards. I don't know, I just kind of picked this up from doing traditional painting, but I tend to work from the back to the front. I don't know if it's my oil paint background, but that's typically what I like to do. And the next step obviously would be the background mammoths and the whole herd and do sort of the final details of these mammoths and bring them to life. One of the decisions I made while working on this cover was I started to realize that I liked not having the line art as dramatic as I typically would have in the past. And this is something I've actually never done before because I usually don't have the time to do this so much so much detail in one, in one uh piece of work. But since this is the cover and since this is the first thing people are going to see when they pick up my book, I felt it was important to give that attention to the front cover that I normally wouldn't if per se it was like a typical panel inside the graphic novel. And one of the things that I decided to do was to actually go in and fade and erase the dominant black line art for the mammoths in the background. And this way it helped them blend into the background. It kind of brought the action more towards the front. And if you wanted to, people could look and see the detail of these mammoths, but they started to kind of fade into the background, which was a really interesting decision that I made. So working my way to the front, I am doing the matriarch mammoth. And you can see kind of just the level of detail that I'm going into when coloring in these characters. When I'm coloring in the animals in this book, I spend a lot of time really trying to get that fluffy fluff mammoth fur and the animal fur and doing just a lot of detail in the characters to really bring them to life, to give them that sort of realistic texture that I was looking for. It's definitely 
a kind of an extra step, um, but I felt the result was 100% worth it because the mammoth turned out be turned out looking really great. The mammoth herd and getting rid of those dark black lines really gave me sort of the courage to continue with that trend and I started to go ahead and get rid of some of the black lines on my matriarch mammoth and the bear just because I felt like it looked really good to see it fade into the background and I was really glad I made this decision because it really did help um, the cover like sort of blend and become a unit rather than separate pieces. At this point, I started to get really excited in the drawing process because I could really see the finish line and I could start to see everything kind of coming together. It's coming along. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Puffalump and I really appreciate it. Isn't that right, buddy? All right, anyways, check out part four of how to create a graphic novel cover available now on YouTube. And I hope you guys all have a good day.